Ladies and gentlemen, I'm privileged to invite the Honorable David Friedman, the United States Ambassador to Israel, one of Israel's most committed friends who has been exemplary in his leadership and courage in strengthening the U.S.-Israel relationship. Ambassador David Friedman. Distinguished guests, fellow Americans, Israeli friends, victims of the September 11th attack, and victims of other terrorist attacks, Secretary of Veterans Affairs, Robert Wilkie, and Mrs. Wilkie, Under Secretary for Homeland Security, David Glowey, member of Knesset and former mayor of Jerusalem, Nir Barkat, vice chair of KKL JNF, Mr. Yair Lutstein, Jerusalem Deputy Mayor, Mr. Alicia Peleg, Deputy Director General of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, David Rowett, Israeli Fire and Rescue Commissioner, David Simchi, District Police Commissioner, David Schumer, KKL JNF Board Member, Executive Director of Hadassah, Mrs. Barbara Goldstein, and with great thanks to our sponsors at KKL and JNF, and I'd also like to acknowledge the honor of being joined by those in Nefesh Benefesh, Alexander Muss High School in Israel, the U.S. Police Unity Delegation, ADL's Western States Seminar, the Heroes to Heroes Organization, the United Airlines representatives who join us every year and who suffered so greatly on September 11th, and the special and uniformed soldiers, many of whom I was honored to meet this past year. Welcome. The singer Don McLean famously sang about the day the music died. He was, of course, referring to the day a small airplane crashed, killing three iconic singers of the 1950s. But as I stand here today, I can't help but observe that there was another day that the music died. It was September 11th, 2001, 18 years ago today. It was a different kind of music that died on September 11th. It was the music that we in America had come to enjoy, a music that comes from peace and security, from a sense of invincibility, from being surrounded always by friendly neighbors and two massive oceans, and from knowing that we were the strongest and yet the most compassionate and adored nation on earth. That music died on September 11th. It went down with the Twin Towers and the aircraft that crashed into the Pentagon and into the rural fields of Pennsylvania. But in short order, new music was created. The victims of 9-11 and their families showing courage and faith in the face of unspeakable pain and suffering have inspired an American rebirth that has been nothing short of miraculous. Apart from the magnificent memorials at Ground Zero, here in Jerusalem and elsewhere throughout the world, someone who woke up today from a 20-year coma would find little public evidence that an attack on American soil of the magnitude of 9-11 had occurred just 18 years ago. How do we as a nation come back so fast? It's quite a testament to the resilience of the American people, to the friendship of our allies, and above all, to the dedication of our men and women who serve our great nation in the military, in law enforcement, in our intelligence agencies, and in homeland security. They have carried us on their shoulders to survive and to flourish and to overcome our darkest hour. These great people will tell you that the battle is still ongoing, that bad people are st still trying to hurt us and our allies, that radical Islamic terrorism remains today as it was on September 11, 2001, a great threat to our way of life. We saw this just yesterday, as the Prime Minister of our great ally Israel was forced off a podium 
by rocket fire from Hamas. Just yesterday, I was in Sterot on the Gaza periphery, where playgrounds must include shelters of reinforced concrete. And parents and children seek to ex escape the rocket fire in the middle of the night on almost a weekly basis. And make no mistake, Hamas, which the United States has designated a terrorist organization, hates America just as much as it hates Israel. 18 years since September 11th, I ask myself how to best honor nearly 3,000 victims. We have built great monuments honoring their memory. We have also raised a new generation that does not remember where they were on September 11th because they were just too young. A new generation with no firsthand experience, thank God, of this unspeakable evil. I'd like to think that if we could poll the victims of September 11 today, they would tell us that the best way to honor them is to make sure that we never again need to build another memorial, that we eradicate radical Islamic terrorism and other movements of hatred and violence from the face of the earth, and that the existing memorials in, gra in Ground Zero, here in Jerusalem, and elsewhere throughout the world, become symbols not just of a tragic loss, but also of a great victory of good over evil. Let these memorials be testaments to the two words we all vowed after the defeat of Nazi Germany, never again.